listening or well the, well the the people who are listening the few the that few. listen here's the deal <laughs> Speed Society is going to be hosting all of these podcasts. You're going to be seeing a ton from these guys. I, like they're yeah. how big are they, Sean? Uh, it's the biggest automotive website in the world, and I mean they got a lot of cool shit. Yeah, we're stoked to be working with guys like that for sure. Anytime we can align ourselves with other huge automotive people, this is perfect. So also, stop listening now and go and like it and comment on it. And the sooner you do that, hopefully, the more podcast episodes you'll hear yeah go ahead yeah the crow 405 murder nova midway street cars like it comment on us tell us who you are tell us why you listen to it keep this going please there are people that are, don't want this to keep yeah, there's going people right now trying to make trying to put it into this they, they so, don't want us on the air and we got guys like speed society that want to help us keep it going so welcoming us let's do it rock and roll help everybody out and while you're there check it out their website's awesome finally 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 back we took a week off. Uh, sorry about that. Everyone has hated us for that. We we so just much mad. you know we're just not scheduled type people. We no. kind of we kind of do what we we just kind of do what we want. We're it's sorry. Tuesday though. It is Tuesday. It's just a Tuesday a week late. We're just a week late. It's not even that bad. Uh-uh. Unless you're a woman, and then if you're a week late, that's pretty bad. It yeah. is. <laughs> Usually they do that deal by days. <laughs> <laughs> just once once it's into the weeks, you, you gotta. You and got a legitimate then you worry a phone on call. your hand. Then you get a phone call. <laughs> Just don't skip a whole week again. Yeah. And then deny. Yeah. Yep. If you're the guy that gets that phone call. Just look, I'm late. We should have woke up earlier. Yeah. What do you do about it? <laughs> what are you late for? <laughs> I didn't even know we had nothing to do. Yeah. Just, I'm never late. What are you uh-huh. talking about? Uh, we have McDougal in the yep. studio. I'm here. In the mess shack. Uh, he's here today with us and we're going to talk about all kinds of awesome stuff. Yeah. And, I'm not uh, real sure what we're going to talk about with him, but I got an idea. I bet, I bet we could come <laughs> up with something. <laughs> uh, okay. So sorry we're late. Um, I'm just going to give you my excuse. Uh, first of all, wait a second here. Let me look at my notes. I'm not sorry. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, McDougal, since you're here, what well, do you have social media? Yes. Are you interested and involved at all in social media? Absolutely. All right. So where could, where could someone find you? If they wanted to find you on social media. Well, at first, that was just my personal page, and I got overwhelmed after the last podcast. It was just immediate 5,000 friends, and I couldn't do nothing about it. People like yeah. you. There's like 4,000 people my friends request, and I can't even get to those people. That's, so, I'm did telling you, you just that... accept all? I just Yeah, and then I had these sunglass <laughs> things going on, and people trying to sell me $24 sunglasses. It was really bad. Those are the people even your you wife believe. tagged me, and she was like, seriously? Yeah. Like, You've got to do something about this. <laughs> It's it's tough, but the the race car being a race car, which, yeah. which is who you are, you're yeah. a race car. Being a race car is contagious. People it like is. people liked you. They liked hearing you on the podcast, so they searched you out. Some they found your personal Facebook page. Oh yeah, and they swarmed camped it. out in front of your house. Yeah, the whole deal. I had lots of people at the Country Boy and Little X looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> they were looking on the pin board. It's where's, only a matter of race time. car live. It's only a matter of time before you show up there, anyways. Yeah, I'm well, going yeah. there. And at the Country Boy, there's there's. Uh, up on the pin board, there's pictures of people with the biggest catfish you've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah. The big deer. 40 pound flatheads. Yeah. Caught and, them and by hand. Rick got, of wood for 65 bucks. <laughs> and, I mean, you got it all. <laughs> and then they're all looking for you. Right. So. One stop shop so there. So I, I made a separate page so I could try to accommodate everybody. Oh, really? Yeah. I called it Justin Race Car McDaniel. Justin Race Car McDaniel. Right. That's so they're for on Facebook. All the people that are awesome and want to be race cars, because that happens every day. I get yes. messages every day asking how to be a race car. <laughs> Matter of fact, on my way up here, I had four or five of them asking the same question. How what do, do I tell? become a race car? What are you telling? <laughs> are you sure you want that life? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first you thing know I know what you want you before you get into that You can't deal. go back, right? You can't un-race car. I mean, <laughs> it's really, really hard. It's a permanent deal. This, yeah. You're cemented in yeah. race car. Yeah, you end up at the like, track every weekend. It's really weird. I feel like weird. people try to become race car, and then after a couple of weeks, they're going to give that deal up. That's why I ask them, are you sure this is the life you want to live? Yeah. A couple of them's like, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it's, it's, it may not be for me. Because, <laughs> yeah. look, I got some other things in life <laughs> yeah. going on, too. Yeah, no. like I like to hang out with my family and go to work on okay, a regular then, schedule. No. Yeah, yeah you're, you're out. You're not. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> Does your work consist of race car? <laughs> yeah. No, then you can't race yeah. car. Does your family consist of race car? Yeah. No, then you can't race car. Yeah. We know yours does because your whole family was at the track they were. Saturday. They were. No, all of them. We're all involved. Everybody yeah. does it. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I talked so, to Bud Heavy for quite a while. Yeah. Bud Heavy. Okay. Bud, <laughs> Bud Heavy. Bud Heavy. He had some uh, 
<laughs> Bud Heavy's my dad, if y'all didn't catch the last podcast. <laughs> Bud, Bud Heavy told me one of the most amazing stories I've ever heard this weekend, I don't, okay? I don't think it's the story. It's not the content of the story oh, that no, counts it's definitely Bud the way Heavy. He puts it's the, the, the delivery. The funny part is, is he laughs at the story, yes. and everybody else laughs at the presentation of the story. Yes. But then when he feels like, I mean, he's yelling at you. You know, yeah. he's standing right Talks in front in of long you. Talks in long-distance. He made me drink, too. Right, but he brought you a, a Bud Light because he, he knew you weren't about that Bud Heavy Light. No, no I'm not about that life. And uh, he he yells at you as he's telling the story, and he's laughing so hard. And whenever it's like, yeah, we got a lot of shit to do, man. This story, uh, is this going to take long or what? Then he realizes that you're starting to, to disassociate with his story, and then he yells. He stops what he's doing with his hands up, and he goes, okay. Yeah. And he does Make it. sure he got your attention. Yeah, yeah. He makes sure that he's still he's everybody's focused. And when with the he okay, when he said that okay, I looked up at him like, oh no, was that the end of the story? Did I miss it? You know, <laughs> was there a test now? And then and then he starts it back into the story because he's got your attention. And then halfway through, he does again, okay, <laughs> okay. And then he. Start- I mean, I don't know if you're supposed to look at him and go, okay, no, yeah, you got to get, or, or if you're just supposed to just, <laughs> just sit there, acknowledge Cause, that cause, he's going to continue the story. Yeah, yeah, it's like. uh Back, in, like in old movies and stuff, when you hear people talking on walkie-talkies in between sentences, they would say, stop, you know? Right. They'd say, we're on our way to the post office. Stop. We're going to get milk. Stop. You know, that's his okay. He does okay in between all of it. Oh, no doubt. That's his stop. That's his, he puts a period when with he's okay. talking. With okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it kills yeah, he, me. He, we he were is dying. a beer. No. <laughs> he, he was a beer. He, he was, likes yeah. the racetrack. Now, mind y'all. <laughs> yeah. When I was he racing prior too. to becoming a race car, when I first started racing, he never came to the track. He showed zero interest in it. When I would bring the race car to his house, he would leave because he thought the cops were coming. <laughs> he said, were. well, because I, I mean, would. the Malibu was a little rough around the edges. And he said, nobody in their right mind drives this thing anywhere. <laughs> and if you do, the cops are going to come. Yeah. Well, now that race is illegal. Become, okay. It was. <laughs> Now that racing's a little more popular and, and uh, you know, me and Monkey's been involved with y'all and everybody else, they dig it. I mean, they're, they've are they definitely changed 180 degrees. They want to come every weekend. They're like, are, we go- are y'all going to the track? Can I come? Or where are y'all going? What Are you out of state? Of or course, you you're Oklahoma? like, yes. Well, your dad is, uh, he's, he's, he's the pre-Monkey. He's the, he's the original Monkey. Yes. So when we say that Monkey has to tell the deal, your he's, dad. He's the monkey with beer. Your dad has to tell the deal. Yeah. The real lot, deal. The real deal. And yeah. he, that's the, the greatest place for him to tell the deal is in a giant crowd of people at the racetrack. So the coolest thing about it is when he's there, I know that most of the idiots that walk up, he's going to handle them because he's going to start telling them the deal immediately. And if they don't like it, he'll follow them around the whole <laughs> track until they know the deal. They know he told them the deal. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's no more questions about the deal. Did you see him hook up with Bob? They locked horns like rutting bucks. Bob who? Uh, I don't remember his last night. I didn't yeah. catch it. The guy, the pro mod crew chief guy. Oh, Bob Gardner. Yeah. Bob Gardner. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan Gardner. That's his Dan Gardner name. and Bob Gardner. Boy. <laughs> oh, they, they whipped it around the back of your pro mod. <laughs> and they started talking about them tires. And my God. they I mean, they both had their phones out comparing videos trying to tell each other the deal and bob bob's a deal teller <laughs> well, too bob, bob, bob Gar- knows the deal bob though. gardner was there to tell the deal yeah right he well, was just passing through he's a he's a crew chief on clint uh satterfield's car right, right. on the turbo pig it's a turbo firebird pro mod in nhra and i mean it's a full it's a legit pro mod and um he came he was driving through on his way to albuquerque or whatever he's on his way through and he's like hey man i'm gonna stop somewhere is there a casino around here anywhere and i was like yeah we're going to the track he's like oh Hell, I'll just come down there and hang out with you guys. I was like, dude, that'd be great. You could tell us the deal. Yeah. Well, we didn't know that Bud Heavy was going to be there, and there's not enough deal to go around. No. <laughs> they yeah, locked in with Monkey each other. Just kind of got lost the whole time because <laughs> yeah. Monkey wasn't going to go over there and fight for the deal telling <laughs> with those two. You can't have a three way deal. No. There was so much dealing going on. There, yeah, because I couldn't whenever stop you're laughing. Monkey, and then your Monkey with beer, which is your dad. <laughs> yeah. They ain't no arguing with that deal. No, Bob did. He, he held Bob, his own. Bob could hold his own in the deal telling. I yeah. noticed that. But then they got into the videos. They were pulling their phones out. They're showing each other their own videos to tell the deal. Right. And I just was like, oh, man, this is going to keep going. This is, it was like a 40-minute ordeal of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much deal telling for me. And by the time he got done, Bud Heavy knew everything about them tires that needed to be known. Yeah. Therefore, he's he going to take, take that lesson <laughs> and give somebody else the deal. 
Because now he owns the deal, <laughs> and now everybody else is going to learn the deal. Does him and Monkey ever argue about the, the deal? Oh, it is brutal. <laughs> like, when you see them two lock up, it is brutal. I have to leave. I mean, they get in the driveway, and then Bud Heavy says well, something, and then Monkey says something. Because well, Monkey and him can actually talk. They they just keep telling the deal over and over and over. And they, but they argue about the deal. And then... But you don't, I've noticed you can't deal like that. No. So when that starts happening, you, you get mad. You walk and then, off. Then you go, you know. You go race car. Yeah. You go put ruts in their front yard with your back tires and then <laughs> yeah. you smash into their shit and you yeah. throw a fit and you go crazy. I like, don't do like the deal, like the repetitive deal thing. I can't handle it. <laughs> but, but Butt Heavy and Monkey are identical. So yeah. they can just like, like two, you know, <laughs> they can deal all day. Banny roosters. They'll just circle each other the whole time. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> But when I get the deal told on me, I get really upset. It makes my blood boil, and then my face turns red, and then I immediately just, I mean, it's bad. But it doesn't bother either one of them. No, they will just literally dance around each other for I three like, hours. Because yeah, the last like... time this big deal happened, I mean, you crashed his truck into his truck, right? Well, yeah, he had my boat battery, and I wanted it back, and I was he was giving but me what, the deal, and I went to leave. That was his battery. Was well, going. it was. It was on his property, he said. Well, didn't you take it off of his trailer? So I went over and took it off his trailer, and he didn't like that. So he came over there and was going to do something. And I drove off with him on the hood, giving me the deal the entire time. <laughs> and, then, and then I, because I was focused on him, I ran right into the side of his truck. And, and so he, you're, you're stealing your boat battery back. Off and, his winch trailer. And driving through his yard. And, and your straps. Right, right. Oh, yeah, whole driving truck full of straps. Through his yard yeah. with him on the hood telling you the deal yeah. and then you couldn't see plus you were angry you smashed into i don't know his if i truck. couldn't see or if i was angry but one of the two you, happened you hit his truck yeah no it, it hit his truck <laughs> and he tells me about it every time so, we, so, so his so, truck still sits right in the yard and every time i go over there he talks about how he needs a cab for that truck because you hit it <laughs> right well you owe him a cab for that truck i do I, and, i'll and, probably and, find him one but i'm hoping my mom talks him into hauling across the scales because it don't run or anything now <laughs> So I'm hoping my mom talks him into hauling it off before I have to buy the cap. So what what is a, another one of your your dad's really really favorite sayings that kills me? Oh man! Oh it, yeah! It, it, what, Time what, and money. What, what did you oh, cost him? Everything. Take, taking that battery. That man. When you get him upset. Matter of fact, anything you, anything we do. Period. Anything any of us kids because we're kids to him. Right. Anything that us kids do. Is time and money. We costed him time and, and money. And he will, he'll stand there. And if I, if I grab the torque wrench out of the trailer and take it out and put it on the table and then don't use it and then take it, put it back up in the trailer, that costed time and money. Right. Because you, know? you could have been doing something else to make money rather than wasting it on the torque wrench. On the torque wrench. And, and why, you, why'd you get it out if you didn't need it? You don't need that torque wrench. You know what? Really, honestly, you don't need the torque wrench at all. You might as well just give it to me. Oh, That's yeah. the way he talks. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I was looking for my meter the other day. I had a little breaker problem in my house. <laughs> And I asked my wife, I said, no. where's my, I have a fluke meter. I'm like, where's my meter at? She goes, I don't know. So I asked my dad, I said, hey, do you got a meter? I can't find mine. He goes, yeah, I got yours. I'm like, yeah. why do you have money? He goes, you don't need it. <laughs> I said, oh. But did you tell him that you it cost you time and money to take well, away from what you're no, doing to no, go like, get your meter? you don't need the meter. I didn't. So he just grabbed it and put it in his truck. Because He's been driving around with it for a year. He I mean, might need it. <laughs> You don't. Apparently, he needs it more than I do. Well, if I mean, he doesn't have it and he needs a meter, that's costing him time and money. <laughs> See, it all goes back to that time and money. It is. It is intense when you okay. got, got him. <laughs> when you got him riled up, you are in it for a while. He kills me, dude. He dude, and he's got the most beautiful hair. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it flows. Good hair. God, it, ain't, it ain't got good. one streak of gray in I, it. I mean, it is. I know why your mom is attracted to that man. It's because everything else you have to deal with is a lot, Yeah. but his head of hair cover. I mean, you should have seen it a few years ago before he started working for the union. I, when he was working for himself, his hair was like middle of his back, yeah. straight up feathered mullet, you know, feathered in the front. You know, he in the rode back. his motorcycle out to my house one day to smoke cigarettes and it's, tell it's me like the deal. An, it's like an enduro deal, wasn't it? Yeah, and to tell me the deal and make sure that I knew that that little Toyota pickup that Monkey was driving was his. <laughs> yeah, and he wanted to make sure that. <laughs> and Monkey needed to get that transmission fixed because yeah. he's got to drive this motorcycle every day instead of driving he, his truck. He drove that motorcycle all the way out to my house. He said, "I get off, like you know, gets off, sparks him up a cigarette, flows his hair in the wind, sits on the picnic table." And, he says, I don't know if you know this, but that little Toyota pickup he's driving is mine. Yeah. And I was like, of course it is. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. You know, <laughs> then he said, okay. And then we got to okay in for a minute. And it was like a woo off in okays. And then 
that was about, that was really it. He just wanted to let me know that he's driving it hey. out here every day to come work for you, and it's mine. Yeah. And I was like, all, all right, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Was that was that the time he gave all three me, you, and Monkey the deal for when we fixed his transmission? But then me and Monkey drove it down the road, and the belt slang off. We were at your shop late, and then it messed something else up, and we had costed him time and money, and he was very upset with he, all three of us. He was upset with me too, and I don't because he had to because Monkey had to drive it to my house, right, or whatever. And you lived so far away. Lived, if you'd have lived closer, right. you wouldn't have cost him time and money. And I'm sitting there going, "How am I costing you time and money by where I choose to live? I don't understand this at all." And, okay, <laughs> he was mad. Uh, we did something was, to that truck after we fixed the he training. He chewed my he ass mad. out. Yeah, because you guys fixed the training in the truck, and you went and drove it and flung the belt off of it, and it overheated or something. I don't remember, but God dang, he was pissed. We all got the deal. Yes, that and, was a mix of the the straps and the pry bars. That, yes. that yeah, 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 I remember the straps and the pry bar deal. Yes, yeah. because and they were monkeys though, right? They, they were both of ours. I had one part bar, Monkey had the other, but neither one of us needed those. <laughs> and he, but, but he needed, needed them. them. And then you guys went and took them back from him. Right. They and were then ours. when he needed them, they weren't it cost there. him time and money. Yeah, and then he had to travel to my house and get them, which therefore cost him time and money. Right. So that was the issue. Just yeah. It's a nonstop. You guys have cost him time and money your whole lives. Always. I shot a twenty two through the house that I live in now, which is across <laughs> from their house. And you live pretty close to him? Yeah, I live just across the road. He lives now. in the front yard. Yeah. <laughs> I moved my, my trailer to the front yard. <laughs> but, you know, I live across the road from him when I was a little bitty guy, you know, like eight, nine years old. I shot a 22 through that house. You know, I, I did stuff like that I, for no good reason, just shoot things. But you were a gun. <laughs> I was a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I you were a this. nuisance. Is what the fuck yeah, you I was like Dennis the yeah. Menace. I was the kid nobody wanted their daughters to be around. Because you cost everybody time and money. Yeah. So I shoot this 22 through it, and to this day, mind you, this has been 25 years ago. <laughs> he still comes over and be like, well, right here, yeah. I had to patch it. <laughs> this right here went through this wall, this wall, through the refrigerator, and over here when you shot it. The like, house would be finished if I hadn't had to do that. Right. That's, that's, like, monkey's the same way. Monkey keeps score. <laughs> yeah. monkey will keep score yeah. forever yeah, never forget everything. never forget and if you that 15 16 socket you took it that one time we was on our way to the track and i never got it back yeah yeah that was if we'd have had years it ago man you know yeah. we could have torqued this bike right here i gave him a fucking three-quarter ton chevy pickup gave it to him doesn't matter he took the 15, doesn't 16. matter that 15 16 socket matters yeah, yeah i'm man. just like man i don't keep score monkey why do you keep score <laughs> you know well that that's tools yeah. Tools are different. I'm like, I owe him a 10 millimeter socket. He reminds me at least <laughs> once every other month. Yeah, but hey, if he, if he, one thing about Monkey, though, if he loses something of yours, he'll be on the snap on truck getting a new one. Will he? Well, I mean, I don't have well, anything he, he nice does for so. me. Does he pay for it himself or does he put it on your account? I, no, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, you got a new one. Yeah, I don't know about that part. But, it just but, pissed him off that he needed it again and it's yeah, gone. Yeah, so he needed he got to borrow it again one. and I didn't have one. But well, they can find you at Justin Race Car McDaniel on yep. Facebook. That's mine. And they I got, can ask you how to be a race car. I got like 2,000 people already. Oh. You're doing pretty good. You're doing <laughs> good pretty job. good there. Hey, buddy. Good I job. I posted a video the other day. Uh, I hate to interrupt you here. Just one second here. I got yeah, hang on. hate hang to on. interrupt you. There's something that I really need to talk about is right it, now. Is it me? I got to talk about. I got a hankering. I got a hankering for me. I got to talk about me. Uh, so... I wanted to take a second to talk to you guys about our newest uh, partnership here at the Chief and Sean Show. Uh, this awesome company. It's called the Carnivore Club. Uh, here's what they do. Sounds good. Every month, they scour the country for the most delicious meat producers that they can find. What the fuck is a meat producer? I, M E A T. <laughs> but what's a meat producer? Isn't that like, don't you just That'd find somebody? People that cow? kill things and cut them up. Oh, but they don't yeah. want to call it a, yeah. a butcher. killer or butcher. <laughs> butcher. Yeah. Okay, they find the best meat producers. Yes. Right. Club that they can correct. find, and then they pick out the absolute best stuff that guy makes. So the best piece of meat that guy has. Yeah, that's what she <laughs> so said. They say. Give whatever, me the good meat. <laughs> whatever, whatever good piece of meat that guy's holding, they put that collection of premium meat in a box, and then they ship it to your door. We're talking wild boar salami, mm. spicy pork chorizo, mm. 
Venison jerky. Hey, mm. McDougal. Mm. What do you know about venison? <laughs> mm. I know they didn't call me for it. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of amazing stuff. They find someone new every month, so every box you get is a totally new pile of different smoked or cured meats. We actually got a box. They sent us a box. They did. And it's a really neat, it looks like a wooden box. It looks like a, it's, a really nice box. It's a nice package here. This, oh, what's that, what's that got on the back? This is a nice a fork, It's got a fork, a heart, I and a love steak. love meat. I love meat. M-E-A-T. I guess that's what that means. I yeah. guess that's what that means. And then in, inside this box, this is amazing looking package here. They've got us some uh, salami, uh, spicy spreadable salami, some um, uncured finnan salami, and uh, some stuff that I can't pronounce. Yeah. Looks and good though, but it's it salami. Does, it smells amazing. And then this is Cacciatorini Picante. Ooh, now that we're talking. Spicy. Hunter sausage. Hey, I'll, I'll bet that's for you, McDougal. Could, could whip that I'll up eat in that, no though. time. So uh, I mean, they sent us a box. We're going to we're gonna grill this deal up, and yeah. um, and we're going to make it happen. It smells amazing. It, it, I bet it's really good. But, you know, if you like the sound of that, go to carnivoreclub.co, not .com, .co. Why would they that's, do dot co? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of weird. What's but, dot co mean? I don't understand that. That's it's. But that's the it's different. It's different. Co. For sure. Co. But okay. You can sign up to get your first box for ten percent off. Ten percent off. Ten percent. Just by a pretty using good Chief and Sean. It's pretty simple. If a box of amazing meat <laughs> delivered to your door once a month sounds awesome to you, it I does. like meat at my door more than once a month. Which door? The would. back door. The back door. Will they deliver their meat to the back door? They. I think they will. If you leave a note. They'll deliver to the front or the back door, Just whichever you prefer. Leave it for a FedEx guy. Can you please deliver my meat to the back door? We're going to need two delivery guys, one at the front and the back door yes. at the same time, right? <laughs> then you get double time, meat. Man. Why do double they got to the be meat. guys? Same time. <laughs> What's that? Why do they got to be guys? <laughs> <laughs> if Hey, but if that sounds for you, you know, front or back door, if that's for you, it's time to join the Carnivore Club. Oh, so this a, you can actually join this. This is like the hair club. Yeah, it's a club, man. Or the Dollar Shave you know? Club or whatever. You can join the Carnivore Club. Carnivoreclub.co with promo code Chief and Sean to get 10% off. That's 10% is pretty good. I mean, that's yeah. like as much as senior citizens. And they got to live around here for fucking years to get that discount. M-E-A-T? This is a big deal. M-E-A-T you can get, at your front door or your back door. You can get 10% off like 30 years early right now. That's not bad. Not bad. Yep. So, uh, sorry, I just, you know, sometimes I just have a hankering and I just got to talk about stuff. Hankering for M E A T. And I, sometimes I got a hankering about meat. Yeah. And I need some meat, and I need it now, and I need it. I need the meat in or around my mouth. Sometimes that's just the way you it goes. Would. <laughs> you would. I think I'm making McDougal uncomfortable. Yeah, here. I'm a little red. Yeah, he's there's, a little red. there's probably some meat waiting at your back door right now. I mean, uh, I'm watching y'all two talk about this, and both of y'all got a glisten in your eyes, staring at hey, each I other. Hey, I love it. Hey, that <laughs> sound. I got really excited whenever you know we, a box of meat waiting at your door. Oh man. I don't know. What's what's I the matter, man? I wonder if I can put my meat in their box. Is there, are, you, are you uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why? Well, sir. Let me tell you. <laughs> I mean, you're starting to sweat. Yeah. You're, you're moving back. Your hands are <laughs> fidgeting. I mean, what's going on, sir? There's four men in this little bitty mess shack, and we're talking about stuffing meat in the back door. Yeah, buddy. Now I'm a little yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. And both of y'all are bigger than me. I think It'll probably <laughs> be somebody different every time too. I Maybe feel it like, delivers I, the meat. <laughs> The meat deliverer. Yeah. I'm sure it's gonna be <laughs> a him. different old boy every time. Different old boy. Damn. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Go join that club. Okay. So where were you at on that deal? Oh man, I forget. he forgot. Look at him. Okay, I got so no he's, idea. he's gonna he's need flustered. to take he a break. Got me, man, he's in the flustered. fellowship, we don't talk about things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the fellowship. Uh, speaking of the fellowship, <laughs> the reason that we are a week behind on doing this podcast is something that's very, very dear to my heart. So I hate I hate to be a week behind. I hate that we didn't do a podcast last week. But let me tell you why, okay? My old man, you know, we're talking about your dad, you know. My old man has not been around a, my whole life. There were spurts there where he had to join a fellowship and be on vacation somewhere for years at a time. And so I didn't always get to, to be with my old man. Uh, and he lived his life 
really rough. He's a he is a uh, he's a drug. <laughs> he's 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 a motorcycle. He's a too, party. Man. He's a motorcycle. I mean, his whole life he's he's built motorcycles and ridden motorcycles and stolen motorcycles and you know did everything you can do on a motorcycle. He's a motorcycle, right? So uh, when I was a little kid, he you know would build motorcycles in the living room and all this other stuff. And he him and his my family, his brothers and shit, they were hardcore at everything, everything hardcore at anything they wanted to do that they thought was fun. They took it to the next level. They made it where it wasn't so much fun for everybody. <laughs> yeah. And people weren't comfortable with this fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, uh, he's calmed down just a little, right? This last bit that he was in the fellowship there was a while. It was a while. And so he's calmed down a little. I think he, the grand boys have a lot to do with that. The grand babies have really calmed him down. Like he's really digging them. And I noticed yeah. he's really chill. He's, he's all over them grand babies and they love him to death. So I, uh, I've been really wanting a motorcycle for a while. Um, not just any motorcycle. I wanted. Harley Davidson. A it's, Harley it's gotta Davidson. be the perfect motorcycle. You know what I mean? I wanted the Harley Davidson. The classic. That's a, that's a big decision. Soft tail, cholo pipes, hangers, chrome everywhere, wire black, big wire wheels. It's gotta you have know, white walls. Big, thick white walls. I wanted the perfect Harley Davidson. Well, I scoured and looked and looked and looked and looked. I couldn't find one. I finally found the perfect Harley Davidson in Mesa, Arizona. So I'm talking to my dad and I say, hey, it was kind of a surprise. He didn't know I'd been looking. I was like, here, I finally found the bike I want. I'm going to go get it. And he's like, hell yeah, little brother, let's do that deal. And I'm like, what What do you mean, let's? Where, what, <laughs> what's this mean? And he's like, yeah, when are we going to go get that rig? And I'm like, well, I'm going to I'm gonna probably just have it shipped here. He's like, no, you don't ship no Harley Davidson. <laughs> you go get that. You ride a Harley Davidson. And I was like, okay. Well, maybe I'll fly out and ride it back. He's like, well, you're not doing that alone. I ain't going to let you. And I'm like, what the heck? You've never really given too much of a shit about my safety my whole life. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now all of a sudden you care, you know? He's like, yeah, I can't let you do that by yourself. And I said, okay, so what are we going to do? Ship your bike out and then we both fly out and we ride back? Oh, no, you ain't shipping my bike nowhere. And I <laughs> and I ain't flying nowhere neither. He said, I ain't got wings in case you haven't noticed. I ain't flying no fucking where. He is grounded. So he decides he's going to ride his Harley Davidson a thousand miles to Mesa, Arizona to meet me there, not M E A T. Yeah. And then he's going to, then I'm going to get on my bike and we're going to ride back together. Okay. I've, I've mapped this deal out. It's a good 16, 18 hour trip. Or a week. Well, well, <laughs> I was expected to be back in time for the podcast. Uh, that didn't happen. We ended up staying in that Arizona area partying for a couple of days because he's a party. Yes. Yeah. And this old man has, he, he showed me that I thought, I thought I was hard. I thought I was a, I was a hard ass. Dude, I ain't got shit. And no one I've ever met has anything on this old man. He is the most hardcore biker, legit son of a bitch I've ever met in my life. I mean, he shows up out there. He's ready to get down. You know what I mean? He just drove. Well, yeah, he it took him three days to get there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Tend to get back. And tend to yeah. get back. Well, we get there. And I'm like, all right, so we're going to, I got the bike. We're going to get us a room. Uh, You know, I wanted this to be a big deal. This may be the only time in my life that I'll ever get to do something like this with my old man. You know what I mean? Something that he loves to do, something that I want to do. And then we're going to ride these fucking Harley Davidsons, these american badass iron machines and we're gonna ride them a thousand miles through the desert together father and son right like this was i mean dude i was excited this is a big deal so i took a bunch of money with me you know what i mean like i'm ready to have a good time you know and a good time to me is a little different from a good time to him so he shows up and i got us this room at uh, I don't even know Scottsdale, Arizona. This, you know, because yeah. the guy where I got the bike, he's like, "Don't stay around here." He's like, "Go to Scottsdale." I'm like, "Okay." So we go to Scottsdale. Got lots of nice stuff in Scottsdale. Yeah, that's that's oh, where the riches live, brother. Yes, brother. Scottsdale's only the rich. I've been a lot of places in my lifetime racing these stupid fucking cars, and Scottsdale, Arizona, is now my favorite city in the world. It does Let me tell money. you, that place can everything. 
It you doesn't. Gotta, you got to play golf and willing to have a hundred million dollars. They don't even know what day it is because none of them work. You it's know what every I mean? Day Saturday. Like though. I woke up and every day was Saturday there, and I didn't want to leave, and neither did my old man. But so we get there, and I told Dad, I said, "We're gonna ride over here to Scottsdale, get us a room. We're gonna hang out there tomorrow. We'll do whatever you want to do. I ain't no hurry. You know, we got a couple days before we got to be back, right? Yeah, a couple, I've, couple I've days. I've driven. A thousand miles before in 24 hours. You know what I mean? Like I can make a trip, you know? So I'm thinking it's no big deal. We'll be back whenever we get there. Well, we, we end up getting at Scottsdale and we get this place at this, this tower where our room is. It cost me $380 a night for this room, right? But I wanted it to be a big deal, right? Where this is like our epic journey across the country. You know what I mean? This is our big deal. Well, dad, he won't have it. He's like, where am I supposed to park my bike? And I'm like, well, that's just it. They got a parking garage. It's underground and it's secured and it has a gate and a code. You can come and go as you please. Park your bike any you know in this parking garage and no one will fuck with it. It can't rain on it. It can't sunshine on it. It can't do it. I mean, nobody can get to it. It's secured. You mean I can't see it from my room? And I was like, well, no, Dad, your room's on the sixth floor. You know? And he's like, yeah, I'm. That's not, I like to stay places where I can park my bike right in my room. Like literally, he wants to park it inside his room with him. Right. Like a motel. Yeah. Bing, bingo, bingo. There. Like on Shields and 59th down like, here. Like, yeah. Like he doesn't stay places that are more than one story. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're more they, of a they horseshoe might give shape. Him the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The places that are horseshoed around the pool that doesn't work. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. where he likes to stay. Yeah. And so, and he walks into this room and he's like, He's like, I can't fucking stay here. They're gonna come. They're gonna come get me. I'm not supposed to be at places like this. He's like, they they better check my record. I ain't supposed to be here, you know. So this place has got, I mean, a living room. You know what I mean? A bedroom. Like this is a room. This is a suite. Right. It's a house. It was a house. And he's that's what he told me too. He said, boy, this is nicer than any place you ever lived in growing up. And I was like, yeah, I know. That's why I want to do this. Right. Let me do this. So he said, okay. You got tonight. I'm gonna get the room the next night. No, it's like <laughs> it's like all right, cool. Hey, this way he doesn't feel like I'm paying for everything. This way he feels like we're a team. You know what I mean? This is cool. We're gonna journey across the country. Well, we didn't end up leaving the next night because Scottsdale is the cool. You know what I mean? I'm talking. This place has more beautiful women walking around it than any place I've ever been in the world. And there's there's no guys. Like all the guys are golfing or something. You know what I mean? And it's just like the live music on every corner. There's there. You can drink anytime you want and motorcycles everywhere. You know what I mean? And rocks and zero grass, zero grass. Everybody have rocks for yards. Well, my dad brought plenty of grass for everybody though. That's the cool part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> grass for everybody. That's why he don't get on a plane. That's yeah. why he don't get on a plane is he brought plenty for everybody. They don't check your saddle bags on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> so, we stay, we hang around in Scottsdale for a day or two partying and having a good time. And we'd, we ride up through these mountains to this, this bar, you know, this Harley destination. Uh, I think it was called Cave Creek or something or Hidden Valley. I don't know, something up on top of this mountain. We drive up there and, and, uh, there's nothing but motorcycles there and there's hundreds of them and all these people are there and it's outside. This bar is making millions of dollars. You can tell. And there's not an inside. It's just like park benches and like tin roof and then like bikers everywhere. And I was like, man, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little wore out on this, this little situation. This ain't really my, you know, cause it's daytime. You know what I mean? I'm not really a partier in the middle of the day. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to ride back to the hotel and take a nap and stuff and get ready to go out tonight. Right. And he's like, all right, cool. He said, I said, are you good here? He said, yeah, I'm good. Sure enough. I mean, I didn't make it five foot to the bike and he's already found him a buddy and they're talking and drinking and they're, you know, I'm fix- sure he's giving him a deal. I'm sure. Yeah. And they were probably fixing to walk out back together, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, he if not, gonna, he would have walked off from that guy yeah. and found somebody else. Who no, was. he'll make sure and, and make anybody that needs grass. He'll make yeah. sure they, I mean, Arizona, everybody's missing grass, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I, there's so, rocks everywhere. It's, it's just rocks. So I go back to the hotel and then. You know, he parties there for God only knows how long. I never seen him again that night. So that, if that tells you anything. <laughs> and then the next day, we're ready to cruise back home, you know, and I'm like, cool, we'll 
we'll make some good time. We'll make we'll make good time. We'll get home at a decent time, dude. I'm like, all right, all we gotta do is ride up to Flagstaff, get on I forty, and we're checked out east the whole way. And he's like, hey, psh, my ass. <laughs> what do you mean? I ain't taking I forty. Why, <laughs> boy? You know what I got with me? We ain't we don't think taking I forty. I'm like, we can't take the highway. No, not me. We're gonna take this road here. We're gonna go this way. We're just gonna head east till we get there. And I'm, I'm like, assuming he has a foldable map. He doesn't have anything. He just remembered. His phone died 30 minutes after he left the house. <laughs> no charger. <laughs> so he, he doesn't care. He's he's where he's at. Yeah. He'll be where he's at. And I asked him, I said, man, don't you want to use my phone? or want, want to charge your phone? We can charge your phone. I got a charger. And he's like, what the hell do I want to do that for? I said, don't you want to call home? Tell mom you're okay? He said, well, my dog can't talk on the phone. That's the only reason I'd want to call home anyway. I was like, damn. <laughs> you fuck, damn. <laughs> so he... uh he named his dog Willie G, by the way, who is Harley <laughs> Davidson's son, just to let you know. Right. So, so we, uh, we check out on basically nothing highways and never saw another person for four days trying to get home and stayed in the worst places you can imagine. Uh, I seen some of the pictures. You looked fairly suspect. Yeah. It was, it was rough, bro. Y'all looked pretty rough. That that type of living is rough. I feel like I didn't know you in the pictures. I didn't know myself. <laughs> I looked at, if I ever when I ever come across the shiny car next to me and I looked over and I was a man in the mirror, you're fucking up, buddy. <laughs> you, <laughs> this guy you, is up to no fucking you are good. Fucking up. I mean, I'm not a I would pull myself over. But yeah, if I was the police, yeah. you was getting pulled over. <laughs> yep. And uh so I mean look at these fucking guys. Yeah. Yeah. Either that was, or just let them go. Yeah. yeah just you don't, don't even. It's fucking, either one. Like, you don't look want at them those problems. Fucking guys. You don't want them. Problems. I can promise you, man. We were the, we, I, we took on another, well, I did. I took on another persona to try and keep up with my dad, you know, because <laughs> you don't want your dad thinking you're a pussy. You know what I mean? Right. And, I've, and I've always thought I was pretty hardcore until I'm riding with that son of a bitch. He's riding 105 mile an hour the whole way, 110 cruising, one hand on the bars, other one on a hooter. You know what I mean? Just hog leg smoking the whole time. He doesn't care. Wind's blowing through the desert i mean at eight million miles an hour crossways picks my bike up tries to throw me off the highway he doesn't even put both hands on the on the handlebars never even lets off i can't keep up i mean finally he stops and he's like if i'm gonna have to babysit you all damn day we're never gonna make it i said we're never gonna make it anyway we're headed south <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Home is east. <laughs> like we missed the turn an hour and a half ago to go north and he's like so you want to go back I like, no i don't want to go back you know you stop for directions or he's like if we're supposed to head towards Albuquerque, which way do we need to go? She's like, oh, well, you should have took the 117 like an hour and a half ago north. And he's like, well, where are we headed now? She's like, Tucson. He looks at me. You ever been to Tucson? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Oklahoma City. <laughs> Can we go to Oklahoma City? Can we get there? You know? And then y'all didn't even make it to Tucson, did you? Well, hell no. We got lost. <laughs> we got lost. We ended up in... uh we were supposed to turn north in Cumado, New Mexico, and then we ended up in uh, Daddle. New Mexico and stayed at a gas station. Gas station that had two rooms. No shit. Nice. No shit. This gas station, we, we were about to run out of fuel. We were on fumes and I'm, I'm just wishing we would turn around and go back and he won't. And I couldn't even catch him to tell him we missed the turn because he's just wide open and I can't ride as fast as he can because his bike's all souped up anyway. Mine's stock, you know, his, He's got all kinds of shit done to it. So he'll just, anytime I get close to him, he fucking rolls the throttle and leaves me. You know And I'm like? <laughs> I'm trying to tell him something. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to hear it. So we get Keep to the, up we, or don't, boy. We, we, <laughs> yeah. Finally, yeah. we finally see this gas station, which was closed, by the way. We had to basically, you know, go wake the guy smoke up. Smoke signals back. to get somebody to come down there and they could unlock it for us. And sure enough, they were getting fuel. And I'm like, man, where are we going to stay, dad? It's getting dark. I'm freezing my ass off because I don't have any gear. You know what I mean? I'm not a biker. My bike didn't even have bags on it. You know what I mean? When I bought it, the guy I bought it from told me I was crazy even to think about riding that thing more than 100 miles at a time. And I was like, well, I thought you said it was pretty new. He goes, it is. He goes, but this ain't a road bike, man. This is a low ride. This is a chopper bike. This is, you're not supposed to drive this across the country. He's like, where are you going to put your shit? I was like, I didn't bring any shit. I'm, it's convenient because I don't have anything. <laughs> and he's like, you're going to need shit. I'm like, what for? It's 100 degrees out here. 
you know. Wait till the sun goes oh down. Oh, my God, it got fucking cold. The so, desert can swing 60 <laughs> degrees pretty quick. Yeah, of course, Dad, he's got bags all over his shit. He's got rucksacks and sleeping Flannels. bags. He's flan, you know, he's got leather, you yeah. know. I mean, he's the real deal. So every time he gets cold, he just stops and puts on more gear. And I'm over there just frozen, literally frozen. We, and we stop at this gas station, and we're getting fuel. I'm like, man, I didn't think we were going to make it. We got to find some place to stay tonight, you know. And he's like, yeah, yeah. So he asks this little lady at the place. He's like, hey. Darling, uh, where's the closest place to stay? We need a room. And she's like, well, talks to the guy. Guy comes out. Guy says, yes, we have two rooms here. And I looked at him and I'm like, no, 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 dad, no, dad, no, please, God, no, don't do this. Don't do this. They have two. Pills have eyes. Kind they of have shit. two spare rooms on this place. You know what I mean? They have, they, for. Like the stock rooms? For travelers. <laughs> There's no, tra- there's nobody comes through here. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even see the town. Well, they only need two rooms. So, dad's like, perfect. You just got anything to eat? She says, well, or he said, well, I can have her whip you up a bowl of chili. He's like, he looks at me and he goes, and I'm going, no, please, God, no, 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 dad, no, dad. I'm looking for a La Quinta or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. some sort of chain yeah. motel around here. I think a motel <laughs> six. Some breakfast. place that's not named the Bates Inn. <laughs> some place that's not named his house. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. like, like I'm not trying some to place say. Some ain't got a street address hung <laughs> yeah. on the door. So. Dude, he looks at me, and I'm thinking, and I'm just going, no, no, please, God, please, God, old man, get what I'm trying to tell you. He looks at me, he goes, can you believe this? We have hit the jackpot. <laughs> they and got I'm like, chili and two rooms. <laughs> and I'm like, no, my God. He goes, he goes, man, we didn't know if he was going to make it. We found they got fuel, they got rooms, and they're going to make us a bowl of chili. He's like, son, we are truly blessed tonight. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell? So we... Stay there, and uh, scorpions crawling all over us and everything you can imagine. But you can park your bike right in there with you if you want to, just like Dad wanted it, you know. And okay, okay. <laughs> no doubt. And he woofs that bowl of chili down. I didn't even, I didn't touch. It. I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah. And the other weird thing is, I've had chili everywhere, and you know, I like, I like chili. I'm a chili guy. Chili and cracker. I like saltine crackers with my chili. Some places you go, they serve you club crackers. Some places they serve you bread. This place brings tortillas with your chili. You're in New Mexico. I've never had chili with tortillas. Mexican food in New Mexico is a lot different than it is here. And I would call this, I would like, I wouldn't even really go so far. I don't even call this chili. I don't know what this was, but I don't know that it was chili. I mean, you could have cut it. You know what I mean? You could have cut slices of chili. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. block chili <laughs> and so dad's wolfing it down he's just like man i can't believe we hit the jackpot here they did some shit boy and of course they got beer so he's good he's good what else you need he's like you're not gonna eat your chili and i was like no nah, man i'm gonna pass on the chili bro he's like you gotta be hungry you ain't ate nothing all day i said i'm starving to fucking death dad but i'm not <laughs> i'm not no <laughs> come out he, he, butter course, dish he's, he looks at me you gonna be a pussy your whole life or what and i'm like well you know i guess i don't know i'm not fucking with that chili though god damn it I go to bed hungry, no phone, no service. Even if you had a phone, it wouldn't work, you know. Go to bed. <laughs> I can't sleep because, you know, hills have eyes people everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No there's, doubt. There's, you get they some make of those, those movies off of real life <laughs> yeah. stuff. You and get I in those metal. back towns no, 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 in New I, Mexico, I it saw, is hills have eyes. No, I know. Sure. I saw some of the pictures that he sent, you know, once yeah. he obviously got service. <laughs> Yeah, and I was thinking that's it. That's New, the fucking place no, from the movies. No yeah. doubt about it. No, no doubt about it. Mexico is the scariest state in the world. I lived there for three and a half years. I was stationed there. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, and and I'm not a city kind of person, so I was stationed in the biggest town in southern New Mexico, Alamogordo, <laughs> just north of El Paso. And I would like just get in my truck and go drive, and then you'd stop for gas somewhere and. You you start looking at the gas gauge thinking, man, I think I can make it to the next town because this isn't looking <laughs> yeah. like a place I want to get gas at. Yeah, yeah. And she's telling the old man, uh, you need to move your bike. And he's like, why? She's like, well, you're done pumping. And he's like, yeah, but my boy is bikes right next to it. We're pumping into his. Yeah, but you're done. You can go ahead and move your bike. He's like, well, I'm not moving my bike. I, well, I'm going to wait till he's done pumping, then we'll move both of them. She's like, yeah, but you're blocking the pumps. 
we hadn't seen any. We hadn't seen another person in hours. Right. No, there's not going to be. Anybody so else. Like, it's not like there's a line yeah, waiting. No, to kick out. no, it's not like this deal is real high on demand here. You know what I mean? There's not people out there honking the horn. And Dad's like, "Well, I'm not taking up an extra spot. I'm just sitting next to his bike while he's pumping fuel. She won't. She won't have it. She's not going to have you hanging out at her gas pumps. No, you're you pumping loiter. fuel. You're loitering at this point. Young punks. Yeah. And my dad got so fucking mad. She said it again, and he said, "Listen, whore." I'm not moving my fucking bike. When he's done pumping gas, I'll move them. And I'm just like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to be in trouble now. They're going to have a hatchet and chop us up tonight. Yeah. So he's, you know, that's just how he works, though. That's just who he is. He's just hard-ass old biker motherfucker, you know. And next morning, of course, I couldn't sleep, so I'm dead tired. Next morning, he wakes up, butt crack at dawn. He's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, he got a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah, we're still stomach, stomach is full. <laughs> drank him a few beers. Yeah. We're, we smoked him a hooter. He's ready yeah. to roll. I think this room was thirty seven dollars a night. So we we stayed at a place on the sixth floor in Scottsdale for three hundred eighty dollars a night, and then then straight to thirty seven dollars, buddy. Thirty seven. Yeah. It wasn't even a hotel. And they marked it up because they could tell y'all had money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's they turned off the 1999 sign, didn't they? <laughs> Honey, get that 1999 yeah. sign. This guy's got money. They said, we yeah. got a couple of them, boss. Yeah. yeah. So we go over there. They actually made us breakfast, believe it or not. And, and uh, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> we uh, we go to hit the road. Dad's gearing up. Of course, I don't have any gear to gear up, so I'm just getting on the bike, basically, and I'm freezing already. Put your bandana around your yeah, head. Yeah, got to put my bandana. That's the only thing I could find in all these places was a bandana, so I got it wrapped around my face. I look like a fucking bandito, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I look like I'm fixing to rob a train, you know, a stagecoach, and Dad's putting on all his gear, and he doesn't say, he's not said anything to me all morning. You know what I mean? He's just hard ass. And then finally, he looks over at me, and he's like, you're going to freeze to death today, ain't you? And I, but yesterday I had asked him for a sleeveless because it was so fucking hot. I said, man, you got sleeveless in that bag or something I can cut these sleeves off with? Well, he's standing there and the next morning it's freezing and he's like, you're going to freeze to death today, ain't you? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you want that sleeveless now? <laughs> you know, making fun of me. <laughs> I like that. Right before he gets on the bike, he goes, that's probably a good idea about that chili. And I was like, what? <laughs> he said, he said it had him all fucked up. <laughs> Hey, but he didn't care, man. He did not give a shit. We That's hit the awesome. we hit the highway. We was doing a hundred mile an hour, hundred fifty mile an hour coming out of the Devil's Pass uh, through these mountains. And dude, you see, I mean, there's cars at the bottom of these mountains where people have driven off. Yeah. You know oh well, I mean? those people probably weren't in their cars when they drove them <laughs> off there, because uh, I'm guessing that those people didn't get the meat in that chili from the carnivore. Club. Oh god damn. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, there was one place, Bloody Wash Flats, New Mexico. I got a flat tire there. Yeah, of course you did. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it. No. It was not worth it. We ended up driving on the flat as fast as we could. And I didn't even want to tell Dad because he just stopped there and knocked on somebody's. Well, that what's weird is they didn't have doors there. They All the have... houses there, none of them had doors. It's just open, wide open. Yeah. A lot of you'll see a lot of like airstream trailers sitting on That's, bricks and stuff yeah, out there. Yep, on the old highway. Right, the old like, highway ran through there. They built a new highway, and then these people parked all these trailers on the highway, and that's where they live. Well, yeah, when the new highway came, this this highway became less popular. So then it was every yeah. all the little stores and stuff just died down, and there's and like eight their, people that stayed. They just put their shit on the old highway though. Yeah. So if you go the old highway, you have to drive around their house and, and yard. there'll be like some kind of mutt tied to a rope hooked yeah. to a spare tire. Yeah, out the front some yard. kind of. Some kind of something. I don't like a cheap or something. You know what I mean? Like, some rough looking <laughs> straight. Don't really look like dogs. Yeah. No, it looks like they're picking off of this thing every time they need to. <laughs> yeah. You know, God, uh, dude, it was. Oh, it's, put it in the chili. Yeah, and I didn't want to tell Dad I had a flat, so I just kept riding because I didn't want to stop there. You know, we ended up stopping in the next little town and plugged it, and I got real lucky and plugged all the way through the tube and everything like a badass, and we fucking hauled ass fast as we could from there. And but we finally. Broke down again, and um, after you know, just miles and miles of desert and hundred mile an hour driving and trying to find fuel, and you know, ran out of fuel, searching through villages with uh, a garden hose, you know, sucking fuel out of people's trucks. I mean, this deal, this was a real legit gangster ass trip, you know. <laughs> and none of these people out there know who I am. They don't. They don't watch they don't the have no cable. show. You know what I mean? Like they don't know what street racing is. So it was nice. It was really nice. It was cool. And then you know, of course, we broke down. Somewhere outside of Amarillo, <laughs> and uh, I text Sean. I finally got service. I didn't even have 
I didn't have service. Dad didn't have service. I didn't have a phone. My phone was dead for days. Dad's phone was dead for days. I'm searching through Dad's shit looking for some way to charge my phone, and I find a fucking iPad. And I'm like, Dad, you got an iPad. He's like, yeah, your mother put that in there. I'm like, we can use this to contact civilization. <laughs> like, like people, people have other iPads and luckily, they talk to each and other. Luckily, Chief knows my number. That's the only by number. Heart. Only, That's the only number he fucking knows. The only number I know by heart is my wife's and Sean's. Okay, and so okay, and okay. Okay. I wasn't fixing to call my wife because she's five hours away, and you know she's not. How's she going to help me anyway? You know, I got a flat, or my bike's broke down. So I call, I text Sean from Dad's iPad because it won't call out. So I can FaceTime or text. I figured but FaceTime would be a little weird. It was blue. <laughs> But it wasn't green. God <laughs> no, damn it. Was it. Blue. it was so blue. I means text, it went through. I text Sean from the iPad. I said, this is chief. Need help. <laughs> he said, it came from an said, email address, though, or something. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, it said chief's dad. It came up. Oh, chief's that's dad. Weird. Oh, but on, on my, I got his number in my phone. It's chief's weird. dad. <laughs> it said chief's dad. It said, hey, this is chief. Just in case you need something to go to bed at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he said, you got anybody around the Sayre Elk City area? <laughs> and I was like. He goes, I got a flat. And I was like, hell yeah, I do. Shane. Shane. <laughs> Shane. Shane, Shane and Bob. Shane McElary. Shane yep. and Bob. So I texted them. said, hey, this is Chief. I don't have a phone. My bike's broke down. I'm almost to Amarillo. I need help. And he, he's like, is this a joke? I'm like, no, I'm serious. Help. Please help. <laughs> and, dude, that motherfucker drove damn near to Amarillo to pick me up. Dropped everything he was doing and, well, and went out there. The dad left to go find a place to charge my phone. I said, go find somewhere. Ride till you find somewhere to charge my phone. So he did. He's the only person in the whole world that knows where I am. We were stuck there together. Right. He left. He couldn't find me. <laughs> he couldn't get back. Could not get back. So uh -huh. he's got his phone charged. So he's texting people in his phone because he doesn't understand why my texts are coming from the ipad to his phone so i'm texting shane trying to tell shane where i'm at and dad's getting the text on his phone and so then he's going hey i can't find you where are you well then shane's like i'm on my way i told you i'm 30 <laughs> minutes out and then, I, and then i'm like no that's that's dad stop dad stop and he's like that's, that's yeah. like when you're a kid and your yeah. parents like the phone's ringing yeah. like dad i got it i got yeah. it and they're in another room yeah hello, and, then hello. Dad, and then dad's like how do you know you're 30 minutes away you don't even know where you are and i'm like no no that's shane and he's like i didn't talk to you. i'm not talking to you. i'm talking to you how does shane why are you talking Who's to shane? shane yeah and i'm just dude it went on for 20 minutes and finally i start texting alicia from his phone i'm like alicia we're gonna use your your message cloud here to talk to each other you just keep quiet She's like, okay, and then dad, okay, what? I'm like, no, that's Alicia. What do you mean it's Alicia? And I'm like, no, listen. <laughs> listen, okay. Where are you, okay? You know? And then he said, I'm on the side of the road yelling for you. Can you hear me? And I'm like, no, the side of what road? So then he calls Alicia. He's like, hey, where is he? He's the only person in the whole world that knows where I am. Yeah, you're supposed to know. Why. Yeah, and Alicia's like, I don't know. He's like, oh, well, you were talking to him. And she's like, no, that was just the text where we're talking to each other. Like, finally, at least like, I'm going to bed. Y'all figure this shit out. And thankfully, here he come, gliding down the highway on his Harley, the side of the highway. I had pushed my bike across the median to the service road, and he's coasting down the highway. Justin! I'm like, God, <laughs> like you can't dude. hear his Like, bike. I can't fucking see or hear this fucking guy. God dang. Nice. Finally, I turned my headlights on, turned the blinkers on. Fucking, he finally finds me. He's like, God dang. He's like, I told you to stay put. And I'm like, I haven't moved one inch from when you were here last time. He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> Messing with me. And I'm like, God dang. <laughs> then Shane shows up, loads the bike up, and then dad jumps in with Shane. Dad says, you're going to have to ride my bike back. I'm done. So I got to get on his bike and ride it freezing cold. He didn't give you no leathers or nothing. No, he didn't give me he, shit. He kept, he he was kept all too. that. He took the iPad and everything. You got a Shane's truck. So now you got a dead so, phone and somebody else's bike and you're alone. Yeah, yeah with a headlight that points straight at the ground. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he thinks it's cool that his headlight looks straight down. So I can't see. I can't ride this fucking thing. It's freezing ass cold. Finally I get all the way to Shane's and I'm not sure which is better. Being on a frozen motorcycle that you're not used to, doing eighty down the highway in the dark with no headlights. Or riding with Shane. I'm not really sure because I could tell when I got there, 
the dad was done. He's <laughs> when I finally get to Shane's shop, dad's standing out by the road waiting for me to pull up on his bike. Yeah, so and it was so going. cold that I tried to, I was going to stop right where he was, but I couldn't move my legs. And I was afraid that if I stopped, I'd just fall over because I couldn't put my legs down. So I had to ride around in circles in the parking lot trying to get my legs to move before I could stop. He's like, where the hell are you going? I'm like, <laughs> I'm freezing my fucking ass off, old man. Dude, I didn't even get off the bike. He's like, well, Shane says we're still two, three hours from home. And I'm like, no, we're not. We're in Elk City. Like, I think I can get here in an hour and 45 minutes. Like, I'm pretty sure. He's like, no, Shane would know he lives here. And I'm like, Okay. And I'm like, well, what's he doing in there? He goes, oh, he's getting it fixed. He says it's probably only 20, 30 min minutes before it's done. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, so what are we doing? He's like, I'm just going to jump on the bike. I'm going to go up here and get a hotel room. And then you just come up there whenever you're done. And I was like, okay, cool. I go in the shop. Shane's like, oh, man, this is going to be a while. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. <laughs> Dad knew that. Dad knew that. He just didn't feel like he fucking didn't want to stay there. Yeah. He, so was, he, he was done. Yeah. He was ready done. to go to the hotel. So he jumps on the bike, heads to the hotel. Of course, then he gets his phone charged, texts me what hotel he's at. And I couldn't piss him off because if I stayed somewhere else, he'd get butt hurt and get mad. So I had oh, to stay yeah. in that hotel. And gee, many Christmas. Shane did an amazing job on the bike, though. Got it fixed. Really, really super, super professional. I pretty much slept in an office chair next to him while he did it. Yeah. Because I hadn't slept in four days because dad's got me all hyped up on everything you can think of to make the trip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I leave Shane's shop. I ride the bike, which now rides better than it ever has and the tires fixed and i feel like man i got a couple hours of nap i got my I bike make fixed. it home i'm only an hour and 45 from the house i'll just i'm just gonna go on home yeah no dad would have literally killed me so i decided oh, yeah. you know what i'm gonna finish this trip the right way i'm gonna make i'm gonna finish it with my old man right we're gonna we're gonna make it home god damn we've been through too much together because there's a lot of shit i can't even tell you about we went through you know what i mean that like yeah. literally I'd be in a lot of trouble, you know, so as you can imagine. <laughs> They'd be so, knocking on the door here in a couple yeah. hours. They'd be this shit. They'd be dropping out of helicopters and shit. So <laughs> so I, I go to this hotel. I get me a room, and I go, this is the nicest place, dude. Oh, yeah. Real nice oh, yeah. joint, you know. And if Dad it's skipped, an elk, it's real nice. Yeah. Dad skipped out on paying for my hotel room that night because he went there early, you know. So I know how much that one cost, and it was it was the cheap. It was oh, yeah. a it was a bargain. Yeah, <laughs> two for one. That was probably the nineteen ninety nine room. Yeah, I got my. Well, it shouldn't have been that much because I had to share the room with somebody's tools. Like I opened the door to the room, and I thought, "Oh shit, this is somebody's room. They're gonna shoot me." I just walked <laughs> there in the shower. So I come, I got there. I'm like, "Ma'am, uh, that room's got people's stuff in it." And she goes, "No, no, no, that's our stuff." We're just like, really. What do you mean? mean? She said, "Yeah, we're just fixing the place up a little bit." And I was like, "Oh." And she just said, "No big deal." And yeah. I was like, "Oh, don't mind the sheetrock stuff okay. in there." Okay, yeah, that's what we had tools there. Sheetrock, asbestos, shit. fucking yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Lead paint chips yeah. all in your bed. Yeah, there's fucking there's Marlboro red butts everywhere. You know, I mean, and, and uh, some guys painted up radio. You know, and I'm like, God dang, there's no curtains. The remote you know I mean? to the TV was on a cord. Yeah, there's, you know, there wasn't a, there wasn't a remote. Come on, man, it wasn't that. <laughs> you nice. didn't plug it in no. and pull the cord over there. No, and, and you could tell they put the handicap bathroom in the non handicap room. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, man, it was jacked up. Well, so finally I decided, well, it's too late to mess with it. I'm just going to sleep. So I parked the bike right up against the window, and there's no curtains, so I'm good. Basically, they could have watched me sleep while they took my motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I couldn't sleep anyway. I pretty much stayed up on my phone till 6 a.m. when dad woke up. And, uh, 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, cause you know, he's an early bird. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And then we grabbed some breakfast and he said, if we don't get home soon, it's going to rain on us. And I was like, okay, what are we going to do? He said, I said, we take I 40. And I was like, no shit. Cause if we take I 40, we can book it. So he dumped whatever he had left. <laughs> <laughs> Flushed in the toilet. Yeah, he knew that if he, he, he could be home in two hours. So yeah. he's got plenty more at the house. <laughs> Man, and we rode the hardest and fastest I've ever, I mean, I had to just nut up and say, if I die, I die because yeah, there's no, home. there's, there's getting, we're getting home. So we, dude, I was frozen, but we made it all the way home. No accidents, you know, didn't go to jail very much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Mind I mean, you, this was three hours prior to going to the racetrack. Yeah, this was, <laughs> so this was like, I didn't make it home to Wednesday or Thursday. Right. And pretty much yeah. we had to get here. And throw the car Almost. on race mode. Yeah. Put the big tires back on it because we're, we start filming soon. So now we got 
I get back here and Sean's getting the Nova ready. Well, it's got big tires on it. So we put the big tires on it, changed the gears and trains and changed all the suspensions and everything you can think of, yes. hauled ass to the racetrack and had a... And shook the shit out of the fucking cars. Man, big tires are hard. Oh, man. man. Big tires are I'm hard. I'm used to seeing Sean's car shake, but Chief's car, wow. That was some serious shake, yeah. buddy. When you got back in it, I I thought it was a wrap for that carbon body. I yeah. thought the body was going to be laying on the track because it shook so If it wasn't hard. wrapped with a giant sticker, yeah. it's probably in a million. That's probably what's holding it. You'd see all, you'd see all the yeah. cracks That's on it. That's probably the only thing holding the body dude, together. Holding that yes. body together yeah. When but you we, stuck it again, it had 800 pounds of boost in it because it just <laughs> tires. Man. Well, we got to get. We got to get the cars going on the big tires because we got the American Outlaws live event May sixth and seventh in Ennis, Texas, Dallas. Yes, the big racetrack there. That's looking. That's like a seventy five thousand dollars to win race. So we got to get the cars ready for that. Plus, yeah. we start filming next week. The the you know Street Outlaws. Yes, that's what they say. Yeah, I mean allegedly that. Yeah. I mean the OG <laughs> Street the four hundred five Street Outlaws. The actual guys that really street race. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. We gotta get ready for that. So we're now we're back to testing the cars again, and so the the motorcycle thing happened. It was the most epic trip ever. But that's why I'm late. Sorry that we're a week behind on this deal. But we're gonna make it up to you. Uh, we did promise two podcasts because of the McDougal versus Goad saga. Saga, yeah, to say the least. I mean, we're in we're in like episode three or four yeah, I of mean, this how's, saga. How's that deal going? What is Man, the deal? Because is... y'all were supposed to have raced already. There was locked in. It. <laughs> That's a disaster in its own. The the lock in thing said, go don't understand English as well as everybody else. Because I don't know how many listeners we got, but I'm assuming 20 it's, it's or 30. At least teens. We're in the teens. Yeah. Well, everybody's like in the teens. Everybody say, I'm listener 12. No, right. I'm listener 12. No, right. you son of a bitch. I'm listener 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a whole lot of them. They're all in the teens. They're, yeah. I mean, we got, we got 20s of listeners, maybe, you know? Yeah. Well, everybody heard the lock in. Yes. And unfortunately, everybody even heard the projected place and damn near the projected time. <laughs> yeah. There's you know? probably people out there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. I went by there to check. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> night I was out there just to see if the crowd was there. But yeah, so you went out and tested the every car. single day from that podcast until the day, what was it? You were ready to race. Sunday when it, when shit hit the fan. That's when I was in New Mexico. Right. Sunday, shit hit the fan. What he, shit hit the fan? I don't understand. Help I had heard out. through the grapevine, through some of his people, that his car wasn't ready. So I simply... Well, he said it wasn't ready, but it was going to be ready in time. Right. And we locked it in. Right. We were racing. Right. So I tested, didn't sleep. I mean, towed that car around to work every day. Every day when I got off work, I'd take a nap in my truck and then wait till it got dark enough and the shit calmed down and I could Go test, test it. I mean, I was you borrowing was people. Ready. I was borrowing people I didn't even know. I was just getting on the internet be like, hey, man, anybody got 10 minutes to spare? I need somebody to watch for the cops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I'm making it work. You're a race car. You know, and... I find out that Goads isn't ready. Well, he has some viable excuses, and that's fine. You know, I understand shit comes up and things happen, and you can't control that, you know. So I simply posted on his Reaper SS page, I understand your car's not ready. Some things happen, some family emergencies with one of your crew guys. I get it. Let's talk about this punk out fee, because obviously if you ain't going to be ready, I expect some money to come my way, and let's lock in another day. There you go. Oh, my God. This guy spent an entire eight-hour afternoon on Sunday on Easter working so hard to avoid just saying why he couldn't be there. He turned into a snitch. I mean, he literally brought up criminal records and was posting it like yeah, it, all these viewers it, didn't it, it already know. Bad. It was bad. Oh, it was Wait, brutal. So he couldn't make the race. You called him out on not being able to make the race. He got mad. On he you. got really mad. He... He went so far as to tell his people, because he learned really quick, the internet's not a friendly place. And if you're not a man of your word... Oh, they will light you on fire. Oh, my they God. They will burn you to the ground. They, they, he got burned at the stake oh, for really? hours, so he got, days. He got, <laughs> it's still happening. <laughs> really? Like, it's still nonstop. Why is go to bitch? Oh, wow. You know, it's just nonstop. So his own fans on his own page start turning on him. Oh, that's and then they're like, well, go to... I mean... What's the deal? Well, you know, why wouldn't you just say, I couldn't make it, let's lock in another he day? He never said that. All he said was, we never locked in a day. We never locked nothing in. Nothing was ever locked in. So that was his excuse. And then he was like, all y'all McDougal nutswingers, why don't you Google him and deer? 
and see what comes up. Oh wow! Yeah, so he's no, trying like, to he's trying to lots of he shit turned into a snitch. Up. He's trying to shame you. Yeah, and I was like, "Go, that's cute," because we talked about that. Everybody knows about that. You know, I don't hide from it. I'm not proud of it, but I don't hide from it. It's part of me. You it's got who a I record. Am. So yeah. you got you a record. So we all got a record. I mean, shit happened, and and I live with it. But needs to say, without even having a drag race with that man. I proved exactly what I set out to prove. When we started this drama, the reason I told everybody I did not like that guy is because he was not race car and he was fake as they come. And the conversations we had in Amarillo proved to me that he was a fake then. And I wanted to burn him at the stake with this fake race car shit. And he says he is race car. He says he will race. He will do this. You will lose. I'll drag your ass. And without even having a drag race, I proved that man is not race car. Oh, that sucks. You know, he didn't get his shit ready. He he didn't have it testing. Um, unfortunately, I don't know that the race. And is, obviously, he could probably see that he wasn't going to make it, and he he didn't contact you ahead of time. That yeah, would have solved a yeah. lot of problems. I, I mean, think. how many yeah, times that, I've paid if you? Would have called fees. if he would have called. Yeah, you've paid me a lot of fees. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've drove, yeah. we locked oh, yeah. in races and I've yeah. drove to your house you, with a you, stack of $1 yes. bills and paid you well, all in ones. You've locked in with me and not made the race and paid me and you've locked in and we raced and you paid me. Right. You know, several so, times. Yeah. I, I mean, mean that's, that's, that's just the way it is. Right. But I, I think that good probably could have saved a little bit of that if he would have said, Hey chief, I'm not going to make it or called you personally and said, Hey man, I'm not going to make it. I don't want him to go out and go crazy working on this car and shit. If, if I'm not going to make it, let's lock in another day. Yeah. Let's figure something else out. And then you probably wouldn't even have wanted to punk out. You probably right. no. Then it's just, just been cool. Let's just, just wait said, two more weeks. You know, yeah. So, all right. So now you guys hate each other even worse. I think it has blossomed into an awesome relationship. You said blossomed. <laughs> it has turned. It started out as a really rocky road, and now we're <laughs> we are fucked up down the creek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is a bad. Yeah, there deal. is no really? road anymore. No, it's it, the road bad. is fucking. It's gone. that bad. Yeah. See, I didn't know. I was out of town. I didn't know. Yeah, this you is missed bad. it. This is like, bad. There's no doubt in my mind. The next time we see each other, he is going to square up. Wow. Yeah. Like he is beyond civil at yeah, this he, point. No, you me, have trolled him too hard. Happen. You have trolled him too hard. I think I planted a seed, and the internet fucking ruined him. The internet well, just yeah. mashed his head into the ground like fifty and fucking that's times. That's why I said to him in the in the in this room, I said ten times, "Hey man, are you sure you're gonna be ready?" You know what I mean? Like, well, if you remember when I called in, this. I told him yeah. on the phone. I said, "I know your car isn't you said, ready. When is it you gonna tell be? Yes. Me. You tell me when it's gonna be ready." I said, "I'm down for whenever. Today, tomorrow, next month, whatever's good for you. You tell me." Unfortunately, and I yeah. think that Goad wanted it to be ready and he wanted to ra he wanted to race or wanted it to be there and it just didn't happen but maybe i don't know maybe maybe not i don't know i i'm we'll have to see i know, i want the race to happen i think yes. he's got enough test testosterone to not be scared i don't think that was the issue at all i think it's he didn't handle the situation appropriately for the circumstances that came about you know his guy is putting his car together had some family stuff go down couldn't get to the car understandable that sucks you know but hey just give me a call and say hey dude don't run around every night not sleeping missing work sleeping in your truck i mean i was testing so much i wouldn't even go home i would just test and then sleep in my truck and take yeah, a shot at my boss's house me, this happened with me and carl scott one time yeah i was supposed to race carl scott out in woodward yeah. on blacktop yeah, yeah. And we went out every night testing on blacktop. Threw Try, my car together, trying to make it work. Yeah, it was for ten grand. On blacktop. It was for ten grand or something yeah. crazy too. Yeah. And tested on blacktop. Damn near crashed my car. Got in trouble with the cops. The whole deal. And and then come to find out, it was all bullshit. See, that's that's where I I mean I have no respect for a guy that can't just give a phone call. You know when me and you locked yeah, in. That eventually, last race, me and Carl Scott talked to each other on the phone and figured out that you know there was some breakdown there were some in between guys but still that's well know. luckily for me and go there was no in between guys no there was there it i'm was the straight in -between guy and i was out of town so yeah. <laughs> i didn't have anything to do with it yeah okay so now we're so now we're we're in a weird spot because we we promised a race here man i know we got to deliver and well, then we're gonna now need we promised an extra podcast and a race and, and so what happened with Carl Scott though? You you locked well, in with him also too. The oh, Carl oh. Scott deal. You oh so you had set up a race with Carl Scott. Carl too. Scott yeah. was trolling boosted, As, and yeah, boosted's he, he like, why don't you pick on other big tire cars? My car's down, yada yada. You know he's going through some building process right now, and he's like, everybody's scared to race me. Nobody raced me, so I was like, hey, yeah. hey, hey, I just had a guy yeah, bitch so out they on me. Locked in. 
So we locked in. You and Carl Scott locked in. Locked in. Wow. When's this happen? While you were gone. It was already supposed to Oh, did to you happen. win? Well, let, let me explain that one. <laughs> Wednesday, tornadoes were rolling through. Weather service said, you know, rain, storms, all that. He lives in BFE out where he was riding motorcycles. And he said, hey, man, the weather says it's going to storm all night. I don't want to drive four hours down there and then get rained out. I said, man, that makes sense. Let's Let's do it the next night. He's like, man, the next night, I've already had this huge trip planned. All my stuff's already heading to Little Sahara. I can't do it the next night. I was like, cool. He's like, well, I'm going to be out there all weekend. So that bunks the whole weekend. Damn it. I'm like, cool. And then he said, well, then Tuesday, I haven't worked in three and a half months, and I'm in the oil. He's in oil business. He said, I finally got a job, and it kicks off Tuesday, and I'm going to be on that for a couple of weeks. Well, so of now well, we're in a holding pattern. What did you lock well, in for? At least he uh, well, we locked talked in, to you. We locked in for Wednesday, and that's what I, I told him. I didn't even know that he had talked to you. He will see. He was concerned that I would, yeah, do what well, I did yeah. to go. Well, you burn him on the internet. <laughs> he thought that I would plant the seed, and the internet would burn him down. Well, but I understand it's Carl Scott. If you have all that shit coming up, you know. Well, that's why we locked it in for Wednesday. But then when we locked it in, we talked about weather permitting because okay, I looked okay, it up. Okay, I well, said, "Hey, weather permitting, then y'all are good. Then yeah. there's nothing to be there's yeah. nothing to be arguing so, about." So I remember I'm having s- any bad weather. Well, it ended up being a flake. It ended up no weather. Okay. Not, at least not here in the city. It got bad in Tulsa, but it went south of us. Hmm. But the weather prior to that afternoon when he would have had to leave, it still said it was going to be bad. So we talked about it. I said, man, we'll we'll get it off. Um, Obviously, you got your things going on. And as soon as you get to a place where you're steady, let me know. And we'll, so you, we'll got, so you guys talked about it. So you got to lock in with Carl Scott for some time. Yeah, we're not. We don't got a set date right now. Well, hopefully this thing with Goad. We'll, we'll we'll chat with Goad too and see what the deal is because we gotta we gotta make we promise this race yeah we gotta make yeah, this gotta happen race or fight yeah. or something you know we no I'm make... like with Goad I mean I, I know to you just want to race I try race. I called him on the phone and the whole time I'm talking to him he's screaming how he's gonna <laughs> kill me and all these other things and that that's that's what I heard yeah I mean he's screaming how he's gonna kill me and and <laughs> you've done cross the line you little faggot and you wow know, which which line I'm not sure but it was whichever one he didn't want me to cross <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. It was definitely the one you wasn't supposed to be talking. Because <laughs> he's going to kill me, he says. So wow. I saw, And I did tell him. He's like, it's over. We're fighting. We're not racing. I'm just going to beat your damn ass when I see you. Bring two or three of your buddies. I heard. Why do you need to I bring your buddies? Beat, That's what beat I, almost to death. Yeah. Is, he told me he's going to beat got. me to death. And I said, okay, so <laughs> when we meet up Wednesday, you're going to beat my damn ass. And now I'm fine with that. But then we can race. <laughs> And my fucking God, he, he literally quit the internet. He don't even manage his page anymore. He deleted his account, gave his page to his wife, and made a big post how he will not be on this page anymore. His wife will post when he's going to races. I'm done with the internet. And oh. quit. Holy shit. I was like, Goad, where you, did you go, though? You trolled him off the internet. He literally quit the internet. You made him quit the internet. Well, he fucked up and called me and gave me his number, so now I text him every once in a while and oh, say, <laughs> I was like, so are we still going to race or no? <laughs> it reminds me of, uh, reminds me of my cousin no. Vinny. When he's, he comes in there, he says, how about I just whip your ass? Yeah, goes, so wait a minute, you're going to whip my ass? He goes, yeah, if I, I whip your know, ass. I use a good ass whip. <laughs> I don't mean I, I don't mind telling you. Is that what he said? Something like that. I don't mind telling you. I, I could use a good t- ass. I could use a good ass whipping. Uh, like, I'd, I'd rather have the two hundred dollars. <laughs> no, I think I'll take the two hundred dollars. Yeah, he goes. So yeah. we gonna fight now? <laughs> yeah. I texted him that that last real communication I had with him before he just totally he probably blocked my number by now. But I said, okay, so you're gonna whip me when we get to the street race, and then we're gonna get to race, correct? And I said, if you want to just call it the Redneck Olympics, you can whip me. We can race, and then we can foot race like a triathlon. So you, and, uh, so you're, you're still, he's still trolling. You're still trolling him. Just on text messages. I just want him to race. I mean, literally, but I don't know if we're going to get that out of him. I'm really hoping we will. Hopefully y'all can talk to him because he won't talk to me. He, uh, he prefers to fight me is his words, <laughs> which that's cool too. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. As long as we get to race after that's, that was my only stipulation. I'm like, you can beat the damn shit out of me. But race me right after that. Might as well bring the cars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a big parking lot. You know, a couple spots, there's a big parking lot. We can just circle the cars up. Turn the headlights on. UFC right in the middle. Turn the headlights on. And then drag our beat up asses in the car. Yeah. Do it freaking Michael Jackson style. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That, that's uh, that's the that's the word on the street, wow. people. They haven't raced yet. We're still waiting on it. We'll bring it to you first. I don't know what to say. We're uh, 
this deal's getting uh, it's getting deeper and deeper by the minute. Yeah. And we're fixing to start filming, which means we will be in the same location at the same every time every week. Yes, every, not one week, but <laughs> so something's gonna happen every, every week. Saturday night. So we're gonna figure this out. Either we're gonna beat each other up every time we see each other, or we're gonna whip each other once, and become best friends, or we're gonna finally race and we're gonna shut up and quit talking about it. I don't know. There's several options that can happen. I feel like though. I feel like with Goad, any of that could happen. You know what I mean? You just don't know with him. I mean, I Goad's a he. I like Goad, and I usually don't like people unless there's something about him that that's kind of similar. So you know, Goad might be the type of person you fight, and then y'all are friends forever. Yeah. Goad might be the type of person y'all race, and you shut up about it, and never never well, even worry about it. I asked him that too. I asked him, you know? can we be friends after this? Yeah, I think it's your tone. Yeah, <laughs> condescending a little. That the, 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 the whole friendship like builds a, out the window. The friend. <laughs> That's, that's that's not gonna happen. That's pretty much what he said. He said I crossed the line. Yeah, <laughs> the one that he didn't want to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I didn't ask what line. You didn't. But it, I'm pretty sure it sounds sounds like I got the same text that you got. Yeah, except it was yeah. about you and not yeah. you know to, to you. you. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he sent me a message when I was out of town, and you had sent me a couple messages, and he sent me a couple messages, and he was like said something about are you are you uh, in it with Justin on this shit? Are you you know are you and Justin together on this bullshit or whatever? And, and I was like, Goat, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I haven't responded to him or you. I'm riding fucking motorcycles through the desert. I don't give a fuck what, what y'all are doing right now. Leave me alone. And he's yeah. like, sweet. Okay, just making sure we're good. You know, because he, he thought maybe I was in cahoots with you. And I'm right. like, I ain't talking to him either. I ain't responded to nothing. No, I, I'm, I'm my riding. own man. Like, I've yeah. made my own bed You don't laying. need somebody <laughs> no. to, to go I don't need an accomplice you. to go troll you with yeah, me. Yeah, you don't need a co-signer <laughs> on troll. No, no. No. No, no co-signer for troll. Your credit's good no, at troll. I, I'll just do it on my own, and then we just not be friends or be friends. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we we start filming, and you're gonna be in the same place every Saturday night. So good luck with that deal. Yeah. You know what you should do though, just What's in that? case he does beat you to death, you should get you a big box of meat first, and that <laughs> way you can enjoy your last meal from CarnivoreClub.com. Yeah. That's a good idea. Cause you know, I'll climb off in that semi of Henson's and just lay up there and sulk and eat my box of meat. Yeah, there you yeah. go. We could have, have some, bring we could, it to the back door. We could have somebody deliver it to your back door. <laughs> yeah. Goad, we could he have would. Goad deliver your meat to your back Goat door. Might. <laughs> he might be that kind of guy. That, hey, remember last time somebody called him a bitch? He tried to pop their head off. Careful. Yeah. He tried. To get I called shame. him every name I could to get him to turn around. He was heading to Alabama and he wouldn't turn around. Yeah. I was like, I just wanted to come back. I mean, like, dude, you had no nine fucking there. cars. You bragged about it on the podcast about having nine Camaros. Get one of them raggedy pieces of shit out in this race. <laughs> I don't give a fuck which one it is. Drag I week don't this. Why he doesn't like him? Why doesn't he like you? I don't know. It's I don't weird. You're know. Such I don't know where it went wrong. Yeah. You're such a likable guy. I don't, I don't, I don't know where things went left. <laughs> yeah, we were we were together and then just <laughs> right such into a, the such curb. Such a likable guy. Yep. You All know right. that's the thing though, like. We could be really good friends, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think, know. I, don't I think y'all could. I think y'all could. I think we could. I got high hopes. I could unfuck his car for him. And it'd be great. <laughs> his car could be fast. He's got good parts in it. Uh, I got high hopes for you guys. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Well, either either you're going to get to see us fight every single weekend or we're going to figure something out. Either way, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. Put a GoPro on something. We'll, uh, we'll talk to Goad um soon and get his uh get his side of this deal and see if we can if you know see if we can get something figured out maybe you guys can race soon i hope so race needs, or he, meet up and fight or he something needs to have his car, he needs to have his car ready by next weekend anyway we start filming you know yeah. so what the hell yeah i mean as far as i know it's still not running currently so he's got a long sleepless road ahead of him if or your not. car ain't running right now and you, plan, and you plan to make filming or not. I mean, from what I gather, he don't give a fuck because he was out gallivanting around at appearances and shit with a Nova not getting Galli his car ready. Gallivanting around. Gallivanting around. Gallivanting. He was out right. fighting some Kansas guys, choking them out on the starting line. Practicing for you. about that. Practicing yeah. for you is what he's doing. Yeah, I saw it. It looked weak. <laughs> God damn! God damn! He I don't know why he doesn't fucking, like you. He's gonna fucking kill you. He I don't know. Kill you. I don't know what line I crossed. He finally gets maybe all of them. <laughs> I don't know what line. If you knew what line, I could not, then I could uncross it. Could I could un un unfuck that line just like I need to unfuck his car. Oh god damn! It's gonna be funny because when James finally does get a hold of you, 
It's, You're just going to be going, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> what did but, I do? But to he's going to be so mad at what did I do to make you so He's going to be whipping me and be mad as hell. He, he won't, <laughs> he'll just be beating my head in the ground. I'm like, why are you so mad, though, Goat? <laughs> what have I done to you to deserve this? You fucking troll. You kill Goat with God, with kindness, and he loses his fucking he's mind. He's old school. He's not used to that shit, man. No. Troll doesn't He doesn't. Could you imagine troll. trying to troll your dad? It you wouldn't don't troll work. people like my dad. That Goat's like your dad. Yeah. He, he just doesn't. It doesn't math to him <laughs> he's like what the fuck is wrong with this guy <laughs> all right well uh good luck with that yep um maybe we'll get it figured out and get a race locked in again yeah maybe hey this next time we're gonna negotiate punk out money yes negotiate uh, all now, obviously you got to step yeah, it in you know step that i stuff. just thought it was a general understanding that's just the way it was Make but apparently not in. uh i do want to say i like your i like your shirt that's a good looking t shirt there. My crow mad shirt. Yeah, that's your your you're representing. It's my favorite street outlaw. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, so midweststreetcars.com dot com if you wanna, you know, if you want some shirts. You want crow you want mad support, appealer. Support us. Uh the Murder Novas and the, the Crow Mads and the Midwest Street Car Shop shirts and the Chief and Sean show shirts. Yeah. Those just, are the cool ones. We just we got some stuff now, man. Go check it out we if do. you haven't checked it out in a while. Um you can go to my Facebook page, and I'll make shirts for people, too. Yep. <laughs> what? You can have your own shirt? I don't know, but if I get enough people like my page, I might. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine what his shirt would look like? Yeah, yep. it'd be sweet. It He's would be say cool. Real big letters. I'm a race car. <laughs> yeah, and, and people message me all the time. They want to buy them already. See? Like, and there you got 2,000 people on there, there already. Go. Yeah. So by the time this good. is over, I'm going to have more. I think so. Probably. And by the time this deal with Goat is over, you're going to have more. Yeah. It's it's not bad averages. Like one out of ten hate me. Hey, like, that's all right. The, the nine of them are like fuck yeah, fuck go. <laughs> hey, one out of nine is pretty good. Even the ones odds. that hate you are still your fan. Yeah, yeah. they're still like otherwise. My page. They, otherwise, they wouldn't even be on there. They're and it won't be long before they'll be buying my shirt. And too. they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the way you think, buddy. All right, that's been a long podcast. I think we gave it to him. You know, hey, we were gone for a week, so we came back strong. We're gonna find out what the deal is with uh, with Goad, and um, we'll make something happen. We'll get a race off. Yeah, for sure. Hell, a foot race, anything, whatever, whatever. whatever. Bicycle race. Got, got to figure something. We can out. get all those Cholo match. bikes out there in the shop Fuck, and race them. Fight yeah. or race. What's up? All do. three. Yeah. If yeah. he, yeah, your carnivore club. Yeah. I just want to establish some kind of testosterone filled event that one guy can be the victor. <laughs> that's it. I don't care what it is yes. at this point. That's America. Yeah. By the way. That's who we so are. So yeah. that you know that you're better than Sometimes them. I mean, I've obviously m- whipped him when it comes to the internet. So let's just make it a trifecta in, in a foot race and a car race. What? Sometimes you got a man. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do man shit Sometimes. against another man yeah. and because, crush that man. And there's no second place trophies. Not when it's man on man. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not when it's man versus no. man. No. You're, does you crush him or he crushes the you? The people watching be like, sir, your man's all over me. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Y'all's fighting in a puddle of man. <laughs> <laughs> you're leaking man everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to need somebody to come clean all this man up. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we're going to go out here and uh, work on these piece of crap cars. Try to, try to unfuck my car. Yeah, we're going to try to unfuck <laughs> both of them. Do. I stared yeah. at it earlier. I don't know what to do. Well, we've, we've got everything that I broke by shaking the car up. You know, we've got it all fixed. So hey, that we have the parts to fix it. It didn't break nothing. Well, we mine be. has been shaking like that for five years. So, yeah. you know, a few of the parts are getting wore iffy. out. The shakes so have talk, got to talk them. to us in five more years. <laughs> yeah, on the exactly. yeah. Well, I figure you'll figure it out. In five you, years, you the Chromad won't, won't even be a car. <laughs> no, the no. streets are going to be hateful to carbon body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, we get another one. Yeah. In five years, we should be able to get it. We can get one. any. We could get a Fiero body. I'm thinking get a pro uh, stock car and race it on the streets. We get it. No, we just change the body on mine. Think about all the cool bodies they'll have by then. It'd be yeah. like your RC car and just pin it. Yeah, and just yeah. swap them yeah. out. We yep. get a Fiero body. We get a trophy truck body. Get a you know, get a El Camino body. We could get all kinds of cool stuff. What I mean, get you a heavy half C10. You know, yeah. get you a big with eight lug axles. Yeah, it'd have to yeah. be extended cab. Yeah, Otherwise, you'd, you'd be sitting in the bed. <laughs> 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 like my boy's go-kart? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's fucked up. Grave digger body. That's what the That's, fuck I need right yeah. there. Drag God, race and a grave digger. Can you imagine how cool that'd be to have a grave? Look at Kentucky. He doesn't get it. <laughs> Something's wrong <laughs> with like, y'all. Whatever. All right. 
We're out of here. McDougal, Peace. be safe. Watch your back. Go, yeah. go, goes out there somewhere, yeah, buddy. He's coming. He's out he's there coming. somewhere. I gave him my address, so we'll see if he shows up. The rest of you listeners, if you he's want, be at the back door. If you want Sean to uh, bring some meat to your back door, yeah, Carnivore Club. Yep, make get, become a member. Meat in hand. <laughs> M e a t. All right. <laughs>